Hey Steve here and welcome to this next processing subscriber image video. Uh, in this video we're going to look at this image uh, that's on the screen at the moment sent in to me from uh, Sue Critchlow. So thanks Sue for sending this in uh, and Sue basically wanted to know how to make this image pop in Photoshop. So uh, yeah I think luckily you've actually given me a really uh, easy job today because the, uh, the image is already um, you know really uh, quite a very nice image and I don't think it's going to take too much to uh, make this really shine. And I think uh, given that it's a long exposure on the uh, on the water and everything's all smooth and the clouds look nice and uh, you know pastely, uh, you know we're not going to want to over process this because it will take away from that kind of smooth uh, look and feel to the image. So we're going to do basically just a, a little color uh, adjustment and then some bits and pieces on you know we're using contrast just uh, to make the uh, details really sort of stand out but we're not going to do too much uh, because like I said it's already a really uh, you know I mean the image is probably 80% there towards being finished already so um, yeah first of all what I'll do is just I noticed that this building over here on the right hand side is a bit darker uh, you know it just seems seems dark in comparison to the rest of the shot. I'm not sure if that's because the image is actually, uh, if, if the building is actually darker here, but um, yeah, either way, I'd just like to brighten that up a little bit before we get started. So what I'll do is, um, yeah, I'll use my luminosity masking panel just to create a selection that's gonna isolate the, uh, the shadows. So, um, well, first of all, let's let's create the the um, adjustment that's going to do the brightening for us. So I'll use the uh, just a simple lightening curve here. Um, so that's in the panel. That's basically just a shortcut to a to a curve that's brightening the image. Um, I'll probably brighten it a little bit more even because that top part there is really quite dark. Um, and now I'll invert the mask. I'll click on the layer mask there and press Command or Control on the keyboard and press I. So we're inverting the mask. Now I'm going to load a shadow selection. So um, on the panel, under this luminosity selection section, we've got everything towards the left of the zero on this bar is going to create a shadow selection. Everything to the right is going to create a highlight selection. And so I want to uh, create a selection that's uh, isolating the darkest shadows. Uh, so I'm going to press the five button to do that. So that's going to load a selection there. Um, I've got preview turned off because I think I'm pretty confident it's going to do exactly what I want. Uh, we don't need to really see the uh, selection before we create it. Um, but yeah, so with the selection active, I'm going to press Command H on a PC. That would be Control H just to hide the marching ants. And on a lowish opacity, about 30%, I've got. I'm going to take a white brush and just brush into this top section of the building here, just to brighten those dark areas up and because that luminosity selection is active it's only allowing this brush stroke to be applied in those darkest areas so you know it's not brightening the sky and creating a weird halo uh, so that's the benefit there of luminosity masks um, and I might just borrow this as well just to sort of brighten some of these darkest shadows over here in the windows okay command or control D to deselect the selection um, so that when I now add this next adjustment, it's going to just have a uh, you know, just an empty layer mask. Um, and I'm actually going to add another adjustment uh, to lighten this area up even more. So you know, I'll do the same thing. I'll add another curves, a uh, lightening curve too. And again, I'll invert it, uh, the layer mask, so that we're hiding that layer. And now I'll do the same thing. So I'm going to create a shadow selection. Command H to hide the selection but keep it active. And then I'm just going to brighten this very top part even more. So that looks, uh, yeah, that looks good. So let's see the before and after on that. So we've recovered those shadows quite nicely. Okay, now the next thing to do, um, yeah, I think. The, the image is, is quite blue, obviously it needs to stay quite blue because that's the colour of the sky and the water, but I think it's still got a little bit of a blue tint beyond where it should be. So I'm just going to use a uh, an effect here that I've got under the colour section 
of the panel. Uh, but I only want to really apply this in the highlights. So you know, basically that's going to give the effect of just uh, increasing the warmth there in the brightest parts of the sky. So it appears that the sun is shining through a bit more than it is. Uh, so to do this, we can again use the luminosity selections here and create a uh, highlight selection. So I'm just going to use one on the highlight end. And then with this selection active, all I need to do to apply this to the warming filter is press the warming filter button. And now while that's doing its job, we've got a little sneak preview there of what it would have looked like if it was added uh, to the whole image. But now with the luminosity mask applied, this is the effect that it has. So this is before and this is after. So that's just a very, very subtle warmth that's been brought into the image there. Uh, thanks to the luminosity selection here, which is restricting it from those uh, shadows and keeping it in the highlights. So there we go. That's basically the uh, you know, the first couple of steps of the workflow taken care of. Uh, next would be contrast and drama. Um, I think we can do this in a, uh, you know, just maybe one or two contrast adjustments because like I said, we don't really need to do too much. So I'm going to use a levels adjustment here and I'm going to just open that up again and just to see how much we can make this pop in the buildings I'm going to go well into the uh, highlights here so we're clipping a lot of the sky but I think that's okay because we can uh, you know, we can mask that back in in just a second so I'm just tweaking these until I get to a point where the contrast looks looks good um, so this is before, this is after. Okay, that will do. So um, yeah, let's let's create a selection now that we can brush through to mask this effect out of the highlights in the sky. Uh, okay, I'll turn the previews on for this for the luminosity selection, so we can see what a five on the highlights end looks like. And there we go. That's pretty much the area that we need to mask that levels adjustment out of so that's that's good we'll click use mask to now load it as a selection command H to hide the marching ants and with a black brush I'll just brush through here I'm just going to change the opacity to 100% there and so we can brush into the sky and just repair those highlights now I think we are at risk of losing some of the definition in the cloud if I kind of over blend that but I don't think it's an issue no that's okay all right so looking at this now this contrast effect is mainly applied just in the foreground you know, in the water and in the buildings so let's see how that affects the image from uh, you know, the original image with all of these four adjustments. Uh, okay, so here's the original. Again, very subtle differences, just a bit of warmth and a slight um, slight tweak of the brightness and contrast. And here we are. This is uh, getting very close to being finished. Uh, you know, I'm not sure really what else we can do um, to, to sort of bring this out even more than we have. So I, I will try just another uh, levels adjustment just to see if we can uh, make the buildings pop even more. Uh, and I think, well, actually, that's quite it's quite nice there. Um, that's just kind of darkened a little bit. So I think I think I like where that's going, but I'll just remove it a little bit from the shadows because the shadows have gone a bit dark. This is a personal preference thing. Um, you, you might like it how it is. But uh, yeah, let me just create another shadow selection so I can now brush this out of the shadows a little bit. But keep the overall effect um, pretty much everywhere else. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now let's zoom out just to see how it looks from a distance. 
again I'm pretty happy with that I don't really think there's much more to do and um, what I will do actually um, you know if this was if I was editing editing this for you know as a portfolio shot I would just add a new layer here um, and then use the spot healing tool to get rid of that little bit of what I assume is like a railing on the bridge um, just down here so um, yeah apart from that I think this image is uh, you know pretty outstanding um, you know started off in a really good place already the initial capture didn't really leave much for us to do in the uh, you know in Photoshop but you know there was a little bit to do just to sort of polish it off and so hopefully what I've shown you here has uh, given you some good tips for processing similar shots of your own um, and yeah also hopefully it's uh, been a good demo of how you can use the panel if you want to get the panel uh, just to shortcut some of these levels and uh, you know these warming filters and adjustments uh, curves and whatnot to uh, yeah to, to adjust your images um, when working through my workflow that I teach uh, if you haven't uh, if you're not familiar with the six stage workflow that I teach then um, yeah, you can go to postprocessingmastery.com to learn more about that. Otherwise, if you're interested in the panel, you can go to luminositymaskingpanel.com or click the links or button below this video to get the panel. And I think that probably covers it for today's video. So again, thanks for watching and I will speak to you soon. Cheers.